It's an unusual town. Good morning. I'm clean for boot. Wander around until I get in trouble. The place where three countries meet, Norway, Finland, and Russia. Let's have a quick peek through the window. Good morning from Kirkenes, Norway. I am in the town center, as you see by the giant playground crab. And I'm going to do a little walk around Kirkenes this morning. It's a rainy morning, as you can see. I got my hat on, so I think the drizzle is okay. The thing about Kirkenes is that it is very near the Russian border, as you can see by many of the signs, which are in Norwegian and Russian. Bibliothek, biblioteka. It's an unusual town. It's not like other towns in Norway because it's so close to the border. And there's a lot of Russian people here, and a lot of uh, international people here from other places. So Kirkenes has a reputation of sort of being a little wild border town, also being very important to Norway and to Western Europe, because it is the last stop here in Northeast Russia before you get to uh, the historically communist Russia, Soviet Union type area. But this morning, we're just going to wander around and see what Kirkenes is like. I just got here yesterday, and uh, I have not seen any of this town myself yet. An important Norwegian word I learned recently is grense. Grense is like border, so a lot of stuff around here has grense in the name. All of these displays around the town center are about this woman, Elisif Vessel, who was here in the uh, late 1800s, back when this place was a small village of 40 people kind of helped develop the place with her photography and stuff and draw attention to it. It's kind of like the mud hut we were in yesterday on the drive from Vardu. Hey, there's a Salvation Army. I've seen a few Salvation Armies on this trip. Um, they're always closed, like totally closed. Like there's like plastic in the windows. This one apparently is open. Let's go check this one out. Maybe I can find a new shirt or something. Something to commemorate my time here in Kirkenes. Bad little selection of shirts. Not sure that's anything I really need, but respectable. About seven dollars each. That would be my favorite. Bit big for me. Well, that's kind of an interesting curio. If you know anything about the band Jefferson Airplane, one of their songs is on that compilation album, and it's the strangest Jefferson Airplane song you could possibly imagine. Not a hit, a song called Lather. Why would you choose that song? Nobody knows that song. I know and love that song because I'm a fan, but an interesting curio for the Jefferson Airplane fan. Look at this lovely little street here. There is a church nearby here. I'm going to see if I can find that. But first, a bear. There are actually bears. I don't know about this town, but there are bears in the area, unlike the other places we've been so far in Russia, <laughs> in Norway. We are close to Russia, and we're pretty much in the taiga now, the huge area of 
trees that extends all across Russia, I think. We're basically in that now. And so there are bears who travel around the kind of the roads and the forests uh, a little bit to the south and to the east of Kirkenes. You see bear. You can see bears. There are bears there. Tomorrow I'll be doing that. Tomorrow's supposed to be a sunny day, and I got probably the most exciting side trip of the trip of the whole road trip for me tomorrow. Anyway, here is the church, Kirkenes Church from 1959. Take a look at this beast in the rain. Quick visit to some of these, not very many, grave markers. Who do we have here? Christiane Cleric? Cleric. Cleric. Can't read them in the rain. Pretty atmospheric though, wouldn't you say? Valdemar Alexander Stukin, 1863 to 1904-01. Kind of hard to see. Out there behind me, the fjord. Never far from the fjord. Look at this amazing tree. Wow, back in the back in the taiga. You see the amazing colors of autumn here in this part of Norway. Well, one of those clocks is right. The one on the left says roughly 11.30. That's what time it is. 11.30 in the morning on a Thursday. Let's have a quick peek through the window. That's not the main hall. That's some little back room. Let's go back around front. The windows are kind of high here, so I can't see in. I guess we could try to go in the front door. What do you say? The front door? Let's try it. <gasps> Somebody lost their little quick snap camera. I wonder what photographs are on it. I'm not going to take it. It's locked. So this church, of course, was built in 1959 after the Nazis destroyed everything else. But I did read that in Kirkenes there are 13 buildings that the Nazis did not destroy, and I was unable to find the locations of them, so I don't know if I'm going to see them on this trip. But apparently there are some older than World War II buildings here. Johansen, Rasmussen, Abrahamsen, Abrahamsen, Nilsen, don't know sen. Well, I don't see any Larsons spelled my way, but I do see a Lars Larsen, I think. L-A-R-S-S-O-N. Close enough. Just between you and me, there is a Larson coming later on this walk. Because uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. All right, let me see if I can get over to the water's edge, the waters of the fjord here. Kind of one of the, the arms of uh, Varanger Fjord, a little narrow fjord called... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name. Billy, 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 Billy Fjord. I can't remember what it's called. Kirkenes has a kind of a cool vibe. It's, it's maybe because I've been in Vardu for a couple days and a few smaller places like Austritana, but it seems like a, just a kind of a proper, regular, almost southern Norwegian town or city, but you know that you are far from everywhere. Town closest to the Russian border in Norway. A Russian license plate. I do have an umbrella with me. I wonder if I should use it. Try not to have to use the umbrella and the selfie stick at the same time. Let's do it now that I'm soaking wet. Okay. All right, I got my dainty little pocket umbrella that I took from Japan. I've not seen anybody else with an umbrella. They just have a plastic hood. So I'm the odd one out here. All right, there you go. In addition to the Cyrillic Russian signs, uh, there's like signs about like military restrictions here, like no drones and no no uh, certain kinds of zoom lenses and stuff. This one says, Ankring for boot, ut slip sledning, 450 meters, Postanovka na Yakor 
Zapreshatsya. I don't know what any of that means in any language. Don't do something, 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 something. 450 meters. The Scandic Hotel in Kirkenes, which I'll be at for three nights. It's all right. It's a little more run down than the other one I stayed at in Alta. Like the lamp doesn't work in the room, one of the lamps. And the refrigerator works, but it's not cold. Like the light's on, but I can't make it cold. It's just room temperature. So I can't cool my insulin in it. The door doesn't lock all the time. When you leave, you have to keep opening and closing the door until it decides to lock for some reason. And I had a lot of problems with the Wi-Fi, which I finally got to work through some cleverness of my own. But the room is made of wood and the beds are comfortable. And last night I got a notification on my phone that there was a very good chance of seeing the Aurora, but it was totally cloudy here. So there was no chance of seeing it. Maybe tonight, there's a chance tonight. And a gorgeous little Kirkenes residential street on a cold, rainy October morning. And just like back in Vardu, right now in the middle of the daytime, not many people out. But last night when I got here at 5, 6, 7 p.m., lots of people out. What am I doing with the selfie stick plus umbrella? Is this working? See, this is Rieser Larsen's Gatta. That's the name of the street. I don't know who Rieser Larsen is, but spells his last name just like I do. Larsen. This is the Larsen. This is my street. I should do some research to find out who Rieser was. Good morning. See a sign for Andersgrota, 200 meters down here. What is Andersgrota? Let us go find out. Getting windy. Oh wow. Here's Andersgrota. Okay, I'm guessing that this is a memorial to the Russian forces, the Russian soldiers who liberated Kirkenes from the Nazis in 1944. Kirkenes. The war. Well, according to that sign, Kirkenes was the first place in Norway liberated from the Nazis. Also, Kirkenes is thought to have had, in all of Europe, the second most air raid sirens and stuff during World War II. Number one was Malta. Number two was Kirkenes. I think I see the Hurdygruten over there. Is that what that is? Oh, that wasn't Anders Grota. That was the Soviet's Minismerke. Anders Grota is still 200 meters down here. Something's off with the math here, but let's go see if we can find Anders Grota. Well, that's not helpful. Oh, here's a sign. Anders Grota bomb shelter. Ticket price $12. Ticket price $12. I hate to be a killjoy, but this is not really uh, not really what I not really what I planned today. Let's go look at the sign. Narvir is that Narvik? Oslo, Berlin, Vienna. And look where we are, back at the centrum. Okay, that's my walk in the rain around Kirkenes. I've had enough of this. I'm gonna go back inside and warm up and find some lunch somewhere. But there's more to come because I got something planned for this afternoon, which involves a bit of a drive and airplanes. I've done some research. Let's see if the exciting thing I have planned actually works out today. On this road trip, I've become preoccupied with the little regional airports all around northern Norway because there are actual regular scheduled services between them and I just think it's really cool that they exist, such little towns. So I'm, I've been trying to capture video of a plane, a close-up plane taking off or leaving and I haven't gotten one really. 
But today is the chance. There is the Kirkenes Airport near here. Uh, I have seen the schedule on the internet. So I'm going to go there. There are a few planes taking off and leaving. Taking off and re <laughs> departing and arriving this afternoon. I've had my hot dog lunch from Narvison. Quite tasty. So I'm just going to go to the airport, see what the inside of the airport looks like, uh, see if I can find airplanes. I've also been keeping an eye on the website, the schedule today. It keeps changing. The, the flight times keep going up and down by 10, 20, 50 minutes sometimes. So I really don't know what the schedule is going to be until I get there. So let's drive a short distance to the Chirkinus Airport and see if we can catch video of one of these little regional airplanes that go to places like Trumsa and Alta and even Botsfjord. This part of Norway is so close to Russia that it's kind of touchy, kind of militarily touchy. So there's a sign here, military restrictions, with languages in Norwegian, English, German, Finnish, and Russian, I think. Camping, photographing, and stop is prohibited. I don't quite know what that means. Photographing anything anywhere in this area, the fjord. This is all Norway. I'm surrounded by Norway still, so I don't know what that means. Why would they st say stopping is prohibited if they have a sign here telling you to stop to read it? I don't know. And here I am going to the airport to photograph things. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, here we are, the Kirkenes Airport. A lot of complicated and confusing signs in English about how to park here. I have to remember my license plate number and pay when I leave at the terminal or something like that. Anyway, we're here and we'll see what we can find. I just saw a plane landing as I pulled up. I'm not sure the dash cam caught it, but we're getting closer. So just a few dozen kilometers from here is the, the place where three countries meet, Norway, Finland, and Russia. And these pillars are in honor of those three countries. The yellow one is Norway, the green and red one is Russia, and the blue and white one is Finland. And it's raining on me, I'm going inside. Kind of wandering around. I've not seen a departure board yet. Um, somehow I ended up in the baggage claim area. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Departure areas. Okay, there's a, a plane boarding that was supposed to have left 15 minutes ago. I guess it's late, but it's boarding now. I don't know. I don't know where I can get close to see it. There's a lounge in here, but I think it's only for passengers. Let's wander around until I get in trouble. I can't get closer. Propellers are spinning on this Vidarilla plane. That's progress. I can't get any any closer to the action. Looks like this is the gate. This is where you go if you have a ticket to go somewhere. And I'm out here in the baggage claim area. That's as close as I can get. So I'll try one from inside. Maybe I'll try one from outside. If the schedule works out, I cannot understand the departures and arrivals board. It doesn't seem to make any sense really. But we'll see what happens. Well, it's not exciting to see a plane take off from the inside of an airport. That's not that interesting. It's not that unusual. Looks like quite a wait till the next one. Making an executive decision. Go outside and go a little bit off the airport so we can figure out something there. I don't really know what my plan is, but I'm going to go a little bit off the airport. Maybe if I can, park by the road and just wait. 
Okay. I'm right on the edge of the runway. I believe any planes coming in will be coming this way. Right over my car. I'm on a little dirt road right on the edge of the airport. And there's a little sign at the entrance of the road that said military exercise area or something. So I don't know really where I am or I really don't know if I'm supposed to be here. I've got the car off. I've got the window cracked. I'm just going to sit here for half an hour or something and listen for an airplane. Okay, there's a problem. It's hard to tell car noise on the highway from plane engine noise. I waited and waited, scanning the sky for any incoming plane. After 45 minutes, I was about to give up when I finally heard my plane. But from behind me, I nearly missed it. Gotta take off. That's the Vitoril plane going to Malta. Yay! All right, success. I was just about to give up. I'd been out there for about 45 minutes, sitting in my idling car, and nothing was going on. I'd closed my window because it was raining inside, but I wanted a little fresh air in the car, so I was just about to give up. But I cracked the window, and I thought I heard propellers got out and from behind me, not coming in, but leaving the airport behind me, got the airplane. Ah, what a success. So this is a successful way to end the video. Thanks for coming with me to Kir- Wait, 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 we can't end the video here. The best part actually happened in the evening. A little bonus footage from Kirkenes at night. Got these lights in the trees. I think it's very nice. And there is an insane wind blowing off the Barrett Sea tonight, blowing through town. So, a lot of tables and chairs and things blown over on the sidewalk. It's kind of an exciting night. Also, supposedly, there is a pretty decent chance of seeing the northern lights tonight, the aurora. The sky does seem clear now. I can see a couple stars here. Kind of excitingly windy. Clearly visible right in town, the sky exploded in a dramatic display of the northern lights. I captured it reflected in the waters of the fjord. Okay, now, as I was saying... So, this is a successful way to end the video. Thanks for coming with me to Kirkenes. Tomorrow, we're doing a drive out to just a few meters from the Russian border. It's going to be the top side trip that I've been looking forward to for months on this trip. Tomorrow is the grand finale of Norway for me. So join me on that. It should be a sunny day. And thanks for watching this, and I'll see you next time.